Our next guest warns the U.S. and China are going about dip diplomacy wrong. Yale University fellow Stephen Roach is in the Cold War camp. Professor Roach is the former Morgan Stanley Asia chairman. Stephen, great to have you with us. Always uh, good to get your perspective on this. Are, are you watching very closely developments out of uh, the secretary's trip to China, or you think it's really a, a you know, nothing to come out of it? No. Uh, good to be on with you and the gang, Melissa. I'm sure I'm watching this, and I you know, I, I know with interest, uh, she's the fourth uh, senior official to, to visit since Blinken uh, finally broke the ice uh, in, in June. Um, all these meetings were pretty much a carbon copy of the other. There's a lot of talk, a lot of ceremony, but very little in the way of concrete developments. I think the one new thing about um, the Commerce uh, Secretary Raimondo's uh, current visit is the agreement to set up some working groups that you know meet a couple of times a year. I'm not optimistic on trying to solve thorny problems by just getting together uh, once or twice a year. We need a much more substantial, permanent um, arrangement, and I've written about that and talked about it on your program before. Yeah, uh, it's a step in the right direction, though, agreed. Um, what's your take on why the Chinese have not launched a huge stimulus program as we've seen in the past. Why why drips and drabs like this? No bazooka. Sure, exactly. No bazooka coming out of out of China as we've seen before. Debt, you know, the, the debt intensity of the Chinese economy has exploded. Uh, it's, it was about 300% of uh, GDP at the end of last year, up 100 percentage points of GDP since uh, Xi Jinping uh, took over. And um, you know, they're, they're mindful, uh, and they've been talking the talk, but not really acting on it since 2016 about uh, Japan-style risks. And, you know, they're right in the sweet spot of going much, much too far on binging out on debt. Hey, Stephen, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. It, your perspective on this is, is pretty unique, considering the amount of time you spent there. So great to get your views. I'm most worried about the currency. Um, when I look at the risks out there, it's not that the CSI trades south of eight times, you know, uh, multiple. It, it's, it's that the currency is really where we have contagion issues globally, and we've seen it. We've seen the dollar rally 5 percent uh, in since mid-July. It's coincided with a lot of the China pain. Uh, can you give your thoughts on the future there? Well, the, the Chinese are doing their best to prevent um, the RMB from going down more sharply than they would like, but it's sort of been a losing game for them. Um, I think that's possibly one of the reasons, Tim, why they uh, moved so grudgingly uh, on short-term uh, lending rates uh, last week. Uh, they're, they're, they're mindful of the currency risk. Uh, there has been some capital flight uh, out of China, and um, you know that's also a, a concern of theirs. Mr. Roach, a week in China, President Biden made uh, comments about this a couple weeks ago. I mean, a lot of people think that will prohibit or keep them from doing something with Taiwan. I think it actually sort of emboldens them. What are your thoughts? Because stuff going on in the South China Sea right now is not particularly good. Well, I'm sort of, sort of with you, Guy. I think, uh, you know, when you have weakness at home, it's the old wag the dog movie. You know, you, you, you uh, start a conflict somewhere else to deflect attention away uh, from problems uh, at home. Uh, I hope and I, I certainly don't think China is going to move prematurely in, in Taiwan. But, you know, we're putting a lot of pressure on them uh, to react to our um, uh, position, which is very strident, especially in the U.S. House of Representatives, uh, with respect to uh, Taiwan. So you can't rule anything out, but that's certainly not my uh, base case scenario. You mentioned the problems at home. I mean, youth unemployment is so bad that they are stopping. They're not going to report the, the data anymore. At what point does this become some sort of security uh, threat uh, to Xi Jinping? I mean, you mentioned that Xi Jinping is the security president. He's concerned with security, particularly domestically. And yet these internal problems, these domestic problems could lead to insurrection at some point if they're bad enough. Yeah, I, I think, we, you know, we... We overplay the likelihood of, a, a, you know, internal uprising in China. Youth unemployment is an issue, especially since the government uh, has clamped down a lot on the private sector, especially the Internet companies, as you guys noted uh, earlier. And that's a big source 
of uh, job growth for young people. They've got to address it, uh, even though they've um, suspended the data on it. They all know there's a serious problem there. You know, consumers are weak in China. They also cancel the data on consumer confidence. It would be great if you know we could cancel all of our bad data and pretend we don't have any problems either. But you know, the Chinese canceling data or not, they know they've got serious issues that need to be addressed.